Batting lead off here. How you doing, Les? Are we going to steal a base if you get on? <laughs> <laughs> Les, uh, just wondering if uh, you could take us so far um, through your free agency plan and process, um, starting with the Von Miller decision um, to go to Buffalo and then um, moving through your decision and the, the group's decision to, to pursue Allen Robinson and ultimately to also trade Robert Woods. It, so starting with the Von Miller situation, it's, it's probably similar to the draft in free agency in that we obviously when you're we held a spot for Vaughn and we held right uh, definitely some uh, cap space for Vaughn. And so when when Vaughn did choose to to go to Buffalo, it's very similar in the draft, right? If you were going to maybe try to draft a Vaughn Miller, draft a player, uh, you know, that plays OLB, that player gets picked right in front of you. At that point in time, uh, you pivot. Uh, there's agility. And, and, and what do you do next? And right. And, and what we did in, in that situation is pivot to a different position uh, that we felt would help our football team and not just say, OK, let's let's pivot to the next best uh, OLB. So I, I think that's the that's that's what happens in free agency. And the interesting thing, right, is in free agency like the draft, once someone like Vaughn makes that decision and, and doesn't, uh, you know, choose the Rams, you know, other players have already, right, uh, determined that they might, uh, you know, go play somewhere else. So that, that's that's kind of been a, you know, you we always go into free agency knowing, okay, there there is a, a chance that we're going to have to be uh, agile. And uh, at that moment, at that time, you know, the the board per se, the players available per se will, will determine your next actions. So that's the bond situation. Uh, you know, uh, Rock, I think you asked about Robert Wright, which obviously we've had, uh, we're fortunate enough to have had a lot of success since 17. Uh, and Rob's a huge part of that. We wouldn't have had the success we've had since 17 without Rob. So, you know, there's a few variables involved when you move on from a pillar player uh, like Robert. And, you know, obviously uh, cap situation being one, diversity of skill set being another. Uh, with our five eligibles and, and trying to, to bring in uh, different g genres to, to help us, right, uh, move the ball, get first downs, have explosives, touchdowns, and, and also and also continued evolution, evolution of some of our, our players like uh, Van Jefferson that are on rookie contracts. So th those three variables really come into that decision. And if I could follow up real quickly, um... Are you guys close on on Aaron's contract and and what's the progress in that so far? You know what we're we definitely uh, we definitely have chatted with with Aaron his representation and, and we're trying to come up with a win win solution to uh, reward uh, Aaron but uh, still definitely be able to continue uh, trying to compete as a team at the the highest level. So we're we're in progress there. Thanks, Les. That's we lost we lost your picture, man. My picture? Oh, hold on, my bad. Let me see here. Okay, we got I don't you. I know how that happened. <laughs> All right, Stu. Hey, let's just to follow up on uh, Alan Robinson specifically. What about his his skill set or his genre, if you will? Uh, did you guys like that you felt like could really add to this offense and maybe unlock some things that you hadn't done before? We, he's he's a player. Obviously, he's taller. He's probably bigger, stronger than than most receivers in the league. Still, uh, has the ability to to run the route tree at that size, which is 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 unique uh, for that size. And he has the the football acumen and skill set to to play outside and inside. So it's a it, it's a skill set that uh, you know comes in handy. Comes in handy. Uh, in, in let's call it known passing situations, it comes in handy in, in the red zone and things like that. So that that was the skill set that uh, we uh, definitely cherished in in Allen. Thank you, Kevin. Morning, Wes. Is uh, it who who's speaking? Kevin. Okay, Kevin. Lost your picture, Kevin. You went off oh, the really? screen. I so see my picture. I see my you see your picture. Don't worry about it if I see it. Well, I'm not looking at it, but I see it. Um, I, I, last time we talked with you, you sounded uh, very confident 
in Aaron Donald's commitment to playing and and uh, and uh, agreeing to an extension, uh, et, et, et cetera. Since then, Von Miller left, and we'd all seen Aaron's comments about the importance of uh, of Von coming back. Did did that complicate things with Aaron at all? You know, that'd be an interesting question. Uh, you know, for Aaron, I think I definitely think. I know Aaron's articulated to us that he would like to be back and, and he would definitely like to uh, continue to try to do special, te- uh, special things, not only as an individual player, but uh, as a team. So that's been ar- articulated, but on the Vaughn and sp- the uh, losing Vaughn in particular, that'd be a question that Aaron would be best. So- Bring him on. Get him on, get him on the phone for us. Well, I, mean, you I, can. I can't do everything for you. <laughs> and then where do things stand with uh, Odell Beckham Jr.? I think he's someone that we definitely want back. I think uh, a little bit more complex situation based based on injury. We'll not get into that. But I think it's a situation where big picture conceptually we've, we've uh, envisioned being similar but different circumstances, right, to this year where when when Odell is ready to play, we we would definitely appreciate him being a part of, uh, you know, that that uh, diverse, let's call it diversity of eligibles we were talking about and and coming in uh, obviously later in the season uh, and and kind of finishing uh, things off with him. So that similar to last year, although different circumstances, different circumstances was last year he was right cut and, and came here a little bit later. This one would be right when he uh, is getting to full speed and has those fresh legs, would love to have him be a part. Great, thanks, Les. Nick. Hey, Les, um, you, you talked about obviously the departure of Von Miller and you're working on the contract with Aaron Donald, but defensively, uh, primarily in the secondary, is there anything that you're looking for, a type of player that you would feel like would really be fit into that, that type of defensive scheme that you guys are used to running? Yeah, I think I think what I do know this. Vaughn played exceptionally well in the playoffs, right? As he as he was healing up from that high ankle sprain. I mean, that was a that was that was pretty high level playing. So I think you realistically, it you lose Vaughn Miller, it's hard to say, okay, well, there's another human being, right? Like Vaughn Miller on the planet. There's one of him, he'll he'll go to the Hall of Fame because of it. But uh with that being said, probably since 2017, we've been a team that consistently ranks uh, near the top in, in sacks and pressures and things like that. It's just come in different ways with different people. So I think when you lose a player like Vaughn, still want to pressure the QB, might have to do it in different ways with different people. And, and we've had to do that since 2017 and, and definitely want to continue doing that because that uh, we believe uh, fundamentally that that's one of the better ways to frustrate uh, a, a quarterback over the course of the game. And also, too, when you look at, um, you know, obviously the departure of Darius Williams uh, moving on to Jacksonville, um, when you look at the, the the ideal vision for this defense, is there something specific that you all are looking for? Because we've noticed primarily when Aaron has been teamed up, obviously, in, in the line, in the interior defense, when Aaron's lined up with Dominican Sue, we notice how freer he can be. And then obviously being teamed up with Bond, he was a little bit freer to be able to, to get around and, and get to the quarterback. Um, is that something that you guys are looking for in the, in the next particular player that you could bring on? Probably both in player and scheme and, and position, right? And, and and maybe it's maybe it's not in a OLB, right? Maybe it's uh, in, in someone that that lines up next to Aaron inside. Maybe it's a uh, another line, you, another linebacker. You just got to do different uh, things to again, like you said, attack attack protections. Uh, and and knowing that most protections, right, uh, against once the games get started, for the most part, the, they're going to, the the opponent's going to try to take away Aaron Donald, right? They're going to try to figure out a way to get four hands on Aaron Donald, sometimes even a fifth, right? Where it's almost a, a, a two and a half, and not a double team, almost a triple team, two point five team, things like that. Now, with that being said, right, how do you how do you ignite pressure? How does uh, let's call it some of our unknown players, lesser experienced players, right? Win one-on-ones, generate pressure, and then, you know, kind of earn a, 
a, a reputation themselves and or, or is it you know is it is it from from attacking uh protections with different games and things like that so there's a lot of ways that you're gonna we're gonna have to do it and and that's what the off season's for that'll be what otas is for that'll be what training camps for is to continue evolving right as we as we said i mean we were a different team uh at the end of 2021 uh than we were when we started 2021 so we'll be a different thing team when we start 2022 and and we'll evolve from there based on how we're getting attacked or based on what we're not doing so best thanks Les. gary hey gary uh, hey hey les um just in terms of clarifying with odell so do you then anticipate a situation where he remains a free agent until around mid-season when he might be ready to return yeah. and then yeah i would say that because he is a free agent that that'll he has that choice so i can't i can't necessarily answer answer that right i know i know we have been in discussion with odell and his uh representation right we we would and, and try to try to make him around sooner than later okay. but he's mm -hmm. a, he's a, you know he's he's in control of his destiny right and then um did you have you guys had or did you have any discussions with uh, as a team that you know has shown the ability and the willingness to go after big name veteran players um bobby wagner zadarius smith have you guys explored that and and where are you at at all i think we always definitely talk about that and 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 to go a little bit deeper right uh whether it's bobby wagner whether it's Zedarius, whether it's any other player, right? That's, I call it, we recognize their name because they've done something well on the football field. Now it's up to us to sit, Sean and myself, whether it's offense or defense, we'll sit with our defensive staff. We'll watch that player. We'll, we'll determine, we like to say in the building, what is that player's go-to punch? What is his, what's the pitch he's going to throw when, he, when he's got to get someone out? What's his superpowers? And, and do those skill sets, right, help us? And, and in in all their cases, it may be a little different than what we're used to. And now and now we sit and analyze. Okay, what if we bring that player on? Because what you don't want to do is bring a player on and just okay, you 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 know you go right into this this mold of what we did last year, right? We now have to look at what that player right does best. Why that player? Why his name is recognizable and does that skill set fit us? So that's that's what we're we're consistently. Uh, doing throughout this process. Thank you. Great. Hey, Les, uh, losing a starting cornerback like Darius, uh, you last year you lost four defensive starters you promoted from within. Is this a situation where that's that's going to be the primary way you look at, at what you do going forward with, with Darius's spot? I think, uh, Greg, we'll, we'll, definitely, uh, we'll definitely continue always trying to to develop from within and then and then we'll look and see okay is there someone from the outside who can who can add right to the to the arsenal and and also doesn't necessarily have to be in free agency or a trade it can be it can be in the draft so we'll uh that's the that's the positive of the offseason uh you know the 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 first game's not until September so we still have some uh you know some months on the timeline the offseason timeline to, to try to add to our arsenal okay and then you've cut ties with several heart and soul guys this time around you talked rob woods johnny hacker sjd uh just some fans had really emotional reactions to those departures and you know your family's online enough that you surely knew about that does that kind of stuff still affect you as a, as a gm when you got guys i do feel bad for my wife uh when we let robert go just uh i, I do know the fans let her know i was like you can tell them that it's not your fault right the, it, yes the here's what i say that oh man what happened can, are you there? We got you. My bad. I'm, my screen is sensitive, but I, I, I often thought. I mean, as a general manager, as a head coach, right? We're we're responsible for the we, right? The T, the team, but the me's are very important, right? The the we's just the Los Angeles Rams, but <laughs> the Los Angeles Rams, right? The 2021 Super Bowl champions were Super Bowl champions because of the me's, right? The people, so. That is always so hard, and and I can say this, Craig. I've often hoped, and I've seen it happen with players in the past. That there's this football purgatory, right, where 
one day we're all sitting around, uh, you know, somewhere around the round table having dinner and, and, and we <laughs> were able to discuss the good times and not, you know, not the moments where you have to call and say, well, you know, we're going to, we're going to look to seek a trade partner for you, or we're going to release you. So, uh, right. Th those moments I often say aren't okay. You, you, you move to the top of the Christmas card list, uh, for the, for the following year. But, uh, I do think, and I, and, and have experienced it before with, with other players as we move on in, in our life's journey and our football journey, there, there is times where, uh, when the emotions are over and, and maybe careers are over and there, and there's a pause in the, in the competitiveness, competitiveness of this league that you can sit down and, and again, enjoy the, the good old days per se, or the, 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 the partnerships and all the rewards. And especially, especially, I mean, Johnny, making the move, you know, from St. Louis to, to LA and, and will will be as large an advocate for him uh, making the hall of fame as, as I can, you know, from a punter position. Right. And, and like I said, we talk about Robert Woods. I mean, 2017 to now we've, we've had a lot of success, a lot of good times and, and he was a major part of it, but really good question. One to take time again, probably not on the top of the Christmas card list, today but uh i do think you know it, there is a time where you can sit back and actually uh, enjoy the good old days per se but sometimes it's like anything in life it, it does take time thank you and yes my 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 wife Kara, she she feels it and she reminds me uh but because there's there's oftentimes she always, she said i i just can't do this anymore right i this is this is not you know this it's you don't want to say ruthless per se because i mean it, it's it's part of the ecosystem when when we all sign up to be in in professional sports there's an element that the nice thing is you're calibrated uh or you're you know you're able to develop calluses for this starting in 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 middle school when you try out for the basketball team for the first time and you you go you know look at the sheet and your name wasn't on it and you know you got to take that long walk home so uh we're all trained for it, but still makes it hard. E. Hey, Les, thanks again for taking the time and reminding me of being cut in middle school. I appreciate that. Isn't that um, hard? Like, yeah, I was it's pretty tough. good in the backyard and then didn't make the – And, I and was you like, got to go to school the next day, too. That's, that's not fun as well. That's They don't do it like that nowadays. They don't. It, it's 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 much more. Uh, it, it's a better process. I'll just say it that way. Well, when I grew up too, when you had when you took your exams, you went to get your grade, and it was right there. There it is. You made a, you made a seventy eight, and you know your best there's, friend. There's no hiding. Eighty eight. <laughs> That's a. You know, what I mean, there's a lot of lessons in hanging the grades up on the door. But you're gonna hear about that not later. For this, for sure. Not for this Zoom call. <laughs> Hey, um, I wanted to talk to you about what's happening just around the league. There's a lot of big names that have moved around. Um, it's, it seems a little unusual compared to years past with all the player movement, the, the, the big name player movement. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And then as a team that has been aggressive in the past and maybe seemed to be out in front of that, has that affected your competitiveness in terms of being able to make moves and adjust the roster with more teams seeing more willing to take risk in that regard. Well, it, it, it it's a it's a league with only thirty two teams, so there's only right there's only really thirty two case studies, right that are specific to right professional football. So I think when I think, I mean, since the you know it's been going on right when there's a a team that's having success or teams that are having success, right? Uh, you know. It, you know, people will will start trying to let. Hey, is that is that maybe a blueprint we can follow? And, and I'm not just saying everyone's following the Rams per se, but it it has seemed like over the last probably five years, right? We we've started seeing let's call it more movement with, as you said, with with uh, known known players, players that in the past have maybe spent a, a career with an organization. But it, it, I can say we've had our own off season going on and, and sometimes you get in the you get in your your own silo but like you said eric it, it does seem like this one 
this off season in particular, right? There's been a, a lot of aggressive, Hey, let's uh, let's, I don't want to call it aggressive. It's it, you might even term it right. Hey, let's do something that has a chance to really impact, move the needle for our, for our team, because uh, it's a very competitive league and everyone's trying to get that edge. If and then one, wanted to follow up real quick with, with John Walford. I believe he's an exclusive rights free agent. I'm assuming he's not going anywhere. He's going to be your backup. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Mike, and then we'll wrap up with uh, Jordan. Yeah, Les, uh, yesterday we talked to Matthew Stafford. He said it was the right time and place for this contract extension. Um, I'm curious how those conversations went and the way you structured the deal specifically uh, to get the cap space for this year and next year, but then obviously, you know, load up the back end of, the, of that contract. Uh, do you see him playing out through that contract? And, and was your mindset just kind of focusing on this window of opportunity to win some championships now rather than, you know, four or five years down the road. Well, uh, yeah, it, I did not give this, I mean, and he was down to, to one year. So I, I do, I do think, uh, you know, Matt, Def, Matthew definitely has a chance to, to write, fulfill that contract. Uh, and then, and that, and that'll be to, to be determined by him, but it, it's certainly one where when we did it, right. We felt like if Matthew wanted to, to play those five years per se, that he, he could easily do it. And I, I think he, he can, he'll be playing at a, at a quality level in the end of these years. And, and I give, I give Matthew credit, right? It's a, anytime you, you do these type uh, contracts, right? We, we try to come up with a win-win and we've seen, we've seen quarterbacks like Matt, right? Sacrifice a little bit for the team uh, yeah, over the last few years right and 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 to try to continue team success and and that formula's work but that's a real sacrifice uh and we're always trying to do a win-win so i i give him uh credit for doing that because if at, for the season that he had and topping it off with a super bowl championship like if he would have been a free agent he probably could have written his ticket or, or named his price right that's that's obvious so i, I give matthew his wife kelly i give his agency CAA a lot of a lot of credit for for working with us and trying to come up with a solve that is win win. Jordan, hey Les, thanks for the follow up. Um, just to sort of clarify some of the, some of your comments earlier as well. Um, when you guys continue to move through this process, will you explore every option in terms of adding maybe you know pass rush help corner veteran corner comp you know, not messing with the comp pick. Will you guys be aggressive in the regard that maybe not financially, but, you know, explore trades, things like that uh, through the spring and summer? Or do you think that you're sort of sitting back right now? Hey, hey Eric, you know what's awesome? You and I didn't make that middle school basketball team, but Jordan got two at bats. Like, she's so good. Little League coach said she's batting twice. Artist is just hey, being kind. <laughs> hey, you and I, I are raise my hand again. Snacks, Eric. We're bringing the snacks. You know, we're watching her get doubles. But uh, uh, you know, what? we'll on the on your question, Jordan. I think you. We always like to say, hey, take advantage of opportunities that present themselves, and not necessarily reach. We're not just going to do to do, uh, uh, but definitely, we do know that as this. I mean, we're where are we at. I, are we in, I, man, we're in March, right? So we, I know we got April, we got May, we got June, we got July. And, and I think we've shown too, it, it can go into September, October, uh, where there might be an opportunity to present itself. And, and if that opportunity, if we think it can help the Rams in that moment, uh, short term and maybe even long term, we'll definitely jump on it. We definitely, I mean, this year we have eight picks, we got five compensatory. So we're able to do a lot of that because we are disciplined this time of year to, to try to uh, acquire as many comp picks as, as possible. So we're always cognizant of that, but you also don't want to just be, okay, our, our whole objective in life is to acquire as many comp picks as possible, right? So there may, you know, in the calculus equation, you, you, we might need to give up a comp pick uh, to acquire someone to help. So we're always, we kind of look at it as, as stay agile, always, uh, know the landscape and, and if an opportunity presents itself uh analyze it and determine if uh that opportunity is worth going for 